Hello. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, brother, I, um, I went through your speech about the second marriage by a man. Uh, men are very much fond of having more than one marriage, and Islam do allow them for that. Even for that, they, no need, they don't need a permission from their first wife, second wife, in case they are going for third or fourth. My question to you is that there is less patience among the female side, and the social circumstances where there is very hard to lead one family when the person wants to go for two, three, when they know they can't have justice with them. In such condition, certain states have made it a compulsory law that man before going there should get permission from the first wife. Still, do you say that avoiding the social circumstances or corruption among the relation where man mostly disowns the second or third wife or they divorce them just for the social pressures or family pressures afterwards, do you still say that they don't need a permission? Or if they do, in circum such circumstances, should such laws of state be religiously followed or not? Sister, that's the question that most of the men, they love having second wife. She did a survey, I think. Huh? <laughs> I'm a victim to this. Sorry? I am a victim to this. No, if you are a victim, you cannot put all the men in the same bracket. If you are a victim to certain things, you cannot say most of the men. You can say some men, no problem. Correct? So if you are a victim to certain things, you cannot put all the men in the same bracket. Okay, anyway, coming to your question, that men, when they want to marry a second wife, they don't have to take permission. Because Allah has given them permission in the Quran, but certain states have said that they, it should be compulsory to take permission. What is my view? In Islam, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 3, marry women of your choice in twos, threes, or fours. But if you can't do justice, marry only one. This statement, marry only one, is only given in the Quran and no other scripture. If you can't do justice, you have to marry only one. That means Quran gives permission for a man to have two, three, or four wives, but they can't do justice, marry only one. In Islam, under normal circumstances, a husband need not take the permission of the wife before marrying a second wife. But in Islam, marriage, nikah, is a sacred covenant. During nikah, a would-be wife can put any condition which is permitted by the Sharia to the husband. Similarly, the husband can put any condition which is permitted by the Sharia. That means if a woman marries a man, she can put the clause that I will only marry you under condition that you cannot, that you do not take a second wife. Now, because marrying more than one wife is not compulsory in Islam, she can put a clause saying that I will only marry you if you do not take a second wife. She has the option. If women don't put the clause, who's to blame? Sister, did you put that clause in your marriage, Nikanama? Uh, basically, uh, Sister, in our... I'm asking you, please, your questions are so long, you're so emotional. Yes or no? Did you put a clause in your Nikanama before marrying that my husband should not take a second wife? It was already cut when the Nikanama came to me because this is what is I'm a common asking tradition. asking you a simple question, yes or no? Did you put the clause in the Nikanama that my husband should not take a second wife? Did you I was put not yes? asked for that. So who's to blame? If you did not ask for your right, who's to blame? Me or you? If you don't ask, good even I will not ask. I'm asking, that means you did not know your religion, right or wrong? Did you know when you got married that you can put a clause in the Nikanama? Did you know yes or no? No. Who's to blame? You or your husband? Who's to Now you know. Now you know or not? Mister, now do you know or not? Yeah, now I know. That means your nikah nama, you can put any clause, but you cannot put a clause. You, you cannot tell your wife, you cannot tell your husband, you should not offer salah, because offering salah is fard. So you cannot prevent your husband from doing something which is fard, neither can you force him to do something which is haram. You cannot say, I want you to have alcohol every day, because having alcohol is haram. 
but anything which is muba, which is optional, you can put a clause saying, if he agrees, he'll marry you. If he doesn't agree, he won't marry you. Khalas. So if you don't know your deen, who's to blame? You or me? Who's to blame? Why are you talking about the state? Forget the state. Every individual Muslim, man or woman, can put any clause which is optional. You can put a clause that I will only marry you if you give me every month 50,000 rupees. No problem. Agree? Agree. Does it? Has the money, he will agree. No. Or you say one lakh rupees. Put a clause. He may agree, he may not agree. You can demand the mahar what you want. You know mahar. How much mahar you kept, sister? But if they promise sister, a mahar and how afterwards, much they are not See, giving them. I'm asking you a question. What is your, where do you come from? You are saying my name is so and so. What was the mayor in your marriage? One lakh. One lakh rupees. What can you do with one lakh rupees today? It's worth nothing. So why did you agree with that mayor? Who's to blame? Because you or there me? was no other option. Ah, so the problem is in you. Problem is that then you have to do. If there's no other option, that means you found the best. See, sister, Islam has got various options and varieties. The problem is that the Muslims and the men, they do not know their deen themselves. You don't know the deen and then you blame Islam. In Islam, the right has been given to the man because to protect the woman. And, and if you hear my answer, that why does Islam allow a man to have more than one wife? It's basically to protect the woman. If every man marries one woman, then women will be unprotected in this world. Because today, sister, there are more women in the world than the men. Do you know that? In New York alone, in USA alone, there are 4.3 million women more than men. In Germany alone, there are 1 million female more than men alone. In Russia alone, there are 10 million female more than men. If your sister or my sister happens to live in Germany, my, my sister happens to live in Russia, and there are 10 million females who have not found husband, only option for them is that they either marry a man who already has a wife or become public property. Do you understand? Public property, Dr. Zaki, it's such a harsh word. It is the most sophisticated word I can use. So, polygyny, a man having more than one wife, has been given to protect the woman, not to degrade her. The problem is that many of the men, many of the Muslim women, they don't know their rights. We are to blame. We don't know our deen very well. Our deen, the amount of rights that the woman has in Islam is phenomenal. In other religion, the woman has to give money, right or wrong? In India, you have to give dowry or not normally? Yeah, correct. You Did you give dowry? No. Did you give dowry? No. You received it. Alhamdulillah. So Islam has given rights if there is something happened with your husband. And if he's not following Islam, then there are ways. I'm not telling. And one more thing, if your husband requires more than one wife so why should you not support him what is the problem you tell me one thing if the husband goes every day outside huh outside to other women as long as he doesn't marry most of the wives did not mind no no problem but chupke se karo dunya ko malum ne padna chahiye correct you go in america eight different sexual partners before they settle down a good Muslimah would say, I would prevent my Muslim sister from becoming a public property. I wouldn't mind sharing the husband. If she's a good Muslimah. Do you understand? Sister, do you understand? I, understand I feel you're emotionally so charged up just because your husband took a second wife. No, this is not the issue. Problem is, he is not owning his relations. This is the problem. He's this is my message of by you to all the people who are here please if you're going to own the relation own them well don't desert the relation because not owning relationship means when he married the second wife did he say he was the second wife or not but if he leaves you without giving you a word you don't know where he is he is not giving you your pocket money he is sister, not knowing sister, you in what conditions you are sister. then Sister, all this is doesn't carry weight because I cannot give a judgment without hearing the other side. Whatever much you criticize your husband, point number one, a good Muslimah will not criticize the husband in public. Do you understand? 
Verily, Allah is with those who, even if my wife, however bad she is, I will, mashallah, she's very good. Mashallah, she's the best wife in the world. But even if my wife was the worst wife, I would never criticize her because I want to go to Jannah. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best Muslim is that who's the best to his family, including the wife. Now, if your husband hypothetically is not good, you be good to him, khalas. He should say, how much am I torturing my wife, yet she's praising me. His heart should melt. Irrespective, the heart does not melt. You will go to Jannah. Do you know that, sister? You are losing your Jannah, sister. My advice from a brother to you is you are losing your Jannah by criticizing your husband in public. Do you understand, sister? But you are not understanding my question. I, my don't, question have to under I don't have to understand you, sister. Because I, as a person, cannot give judgment without hearing him. He's not present here. It is Giba. It is Gibat. My advice to you is that, sister, forget about Gibat. Forgive. You will go to Jannah, inshallah. Hope that answers the question. Oh, oh, oh.